Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're looking at the WLED software and we're looking at version 13.3 of the software and we will be flashing it onto a Wemos D1 Mini and also we're going to be upgrading one of my Wemos D1 Minis using the over air update facility which is available on the WLED software. So we're using my board that I made a couple of years ago so let's get started. So I've powered up my board, just make sure it still works with the old software on it. And everything seems to be working. So first off, we'll check what version of software we have on my board. So we we'll go to config, security and updates. And as you can see, we have version 12. So we're going to be clicking manual OTA update and it suggests ver version 13.3. So clicking on that takes you to the release page. And because we're on a Wemos D1 Win Mini, we just need the ESP8266 version. So we'll click on that and we'll let it download. And back to the WLED software, we browse and we browse for the download location and then we click on the file that we've just downloaded, click open, and then we click update. And that should update our software and retain our settings. If you're updating from a really old version, there may be some settings issues, in which case I would suggest starting afresh, but going from version 12 to 13, shouldn't be any problem anyway it looks like it's updated the modules come back on and it switched back on excellent so we'll just click a couple of the options so we'll select random cycle and select some select a couple of the preset sequences and everything seems to be working quite nicely with that Now these are 64 LED boards that I bought a while ago from eBay or somewhere. And they do represent the sequences quite nicely. Okay, now we're going to flash the board that's on the left hand side as if it was going to be a fresh board. So we need to know what type of board we've got, which type of ESP board we've got. And we know we've got the ESP12F with the aerial design. And that uses the DIO. So we click on browse for our downloaded file. Now as you see, node MCU PY, PY flasher recommends we use DIO for this. So we'll select a com speed, Let's make sure DIO. We're going to collect, uh, click wipe all data. Now we're going to connect the ESP unit via USB. And we're going to click reload. And there's our COM port. And then we're going to hit flash. Now this is going to pull some information from the chip and slowly flash it. So whilst we wait for this to flash, a lot of people who view my channel are not subscribed, as you can see from these statistics. I would greatly appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button and join in my family. It would help the channel a lot and help me a lot. Thank you. So you could actually select a higher board rate on this and it should flash just as well. So we patiently wait for this to flash. It's flashed. Now it's asking us to switch, um, should we say reset the ESP unit. 
So we're going to press the reset button on the side and nothing happens. So we need to pair it up. So using your smartphone, we're looking for the WLED AP uh, Wi-Fi. And we're using the password WLED1234. And as soon as we connect to that, you see it jumps straight to the settings. So we're going to go to Wi-Fi settings and we're going to put in the Wi-Fi SSID and password. And we can leave everything else as it is. So I'll put in the necessary SSID and password. And we connect, uh, we've clicked save and connect. Now I've used the network scanner to find the IP address. And quite conveniently it shows it there. So we're going to open this HTTP and you can see we have the user interface and everything looks good. So because we're using the WeMOS relay, that is actually on GPIO 12. These relays are a couple of pounds off Banggood, eBay or what have you. So we've selected GPIO, GPIO 12 and saved it. And if we go back and we hit power, on comes the lights, but only half are being used. So we need to tell the WLED software how many LEDs we've got. So config, LED preferences, and you can see total LEDs 30, and we need to change that to 64. So LED outputs length 64, click save, and they all light up. So I'm just checking the primary colours, the red, green and blue. And they're working. Now some LED strips use a different sequence. You can see ours is GRB. If we switch to RGB, this now switches round red and green. So if you do flash yours and find that the red and green is back to front, that's the setting that you need to change. So we'll go back and we'll change ours back to how it should be, which is GRB. And it's done that, and now the colours are correct. So we'll pop it on random cycle, click a couple of the pre-made sequences. And everything seems to be working quite nicely with that. And some of the sequences are very, very nice. This WLED software has improved immensely over the years. Credits to the team who's wrote this and the guy who created it. It's absolutely brilliant. So now we've got three units plugged onto my light controller board and they're working as standalone units. So we're going to synchronize two together. Now there's some really cool additions to this. We've got synchronization groups. So you've got eight groups. You can have one master and a load of receivers or you can have them all talking to each other, going backwards and forwards. It really is good. So what we're going to do is we're going to put board one and board three on one group and we're going to put board two on another group. So that's board number two. So board one and board three are on group one and board two is on group two. So we should be able to control board one and it should reflect that on board three. It's not done it yet because I've forgotten, forgotten to click sync at the top. Must remember to click sync and make sure all of the units have got the sync button 
switched on. So you can see board two switches on and off and doesn't affect board number three. And that's clicking, switching board number one. And you can see board number three follows. It's a really, really cool feature. If you've got multiple WLED um, installations, you can group them together, have one master and the rest slaving off them. It really is brilliant. Or you can go to the next level and use MQTT to control them. As sometimes this is a little bit flaky because it uses UDP. Which is a fire and forget protocol. As you can see, we're changing now the software on board number two and it's not affecting boards number one and three. So this really is a great addition to this software. You could get some really complex installations with this. Now I did actually have to change the grouping slightly because it was interfering with some of my units I've got here. So boards one and three are now on eight and board two is now on seven. Just exactly the same as we did before, but just different numbering. Make sure all the UDP ports are the same, which is fine. So what we've done now is we've selected board number three is just to receive, will not transmit instructions. So we'll just double, double check our settings. Now again, when you select these, it seems to turn the sync off. So always make sure that sync is switched back on. Like that. So I've we'll selected that back again. And you can see it's turned sync off again. So always remember, once you've changed any of the settings, make sure sync is switched back on. So board three we can control, but it doesn't affect board one because board three is now receive but not a send unit. But if we go back to board one, it now controls board three as well because board one is a send and receive unit. This really is an excellent addition to this software. Now there are many other configuration options for this, but this is just a basic setup and to get you running. I could say MQTT and Node Red is an absolutely brilliant and GUI configurable way of doing this and really does expand the usage of this. But for now, we're going to just use the internal sync features. So, there, that's a quick setup on how to flash how to update and how to quickly synchronize them together using the WLED 13.3 software which is available at the moment. If you're interested in any of my other WLED LED videos please click this link. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I do have a Patreon. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again.